Okay guys, I'm gonna show you what each of the layout options in Photo Merge look like with four different scenes and compare them to each other using the layout of auto to cylindrical to spherical and also perspective. Two are great, one is okay and one is absolutely hot trash that I wouldn't even waste your time using. Okay, so what I have is four panoramic images that will run through Photo Merge in Photoshop, and we'll run the four layouts on them and then do a really close comparison. Each image offers a different view. You'll find yourself shooting at some time from close up scenes like waterfalls to a really wide open vista. So let's dive in and have a look at the raw files first, and then the actual stitches that made up those images with those different layouts. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and Basically with all these images, all I've really done is I've just blended them together. I haven't done vignette removal because I don't want to introduce any kind of lighting issues into the shot that actually never existed. So vignette removal is obviously if you've got darkening areas on the edge of your file. So these images don't really have that. Again, with the lens profile corrections, it actually does that kind of already for you. Geometric distortion correction. Again, as part of our camera raw processing, We've already done that with doing our lens correction. So again, I don't want to double up on doing a process that's actually already been done. Content aware fill, I don't really select this because a lot of the time when I shoot, I shoot for the crop. So what that means is I've actually gone in and I've looked through my scene, realized what sort of panoramic I want to shoot. And then I slightly open up my focal length because then once the image is stitched, I know that I have to just come in and crop slightly. I'm not shooting a big massive scene that would be 200 meg and then coming in and cropping it, it ends up only being 60 meg file, where if you actually shoot for the crop, you can end up with a 200 meg file with the view you want, not with a 60 meg file. All right, so let's jump in and have a look at these. So this is a, again, a panoramic stitch. And what I've done is I've actually come through and these are the files that made them up. So I've actually stitched this one in Camera Raw and exported it out as a smart object. And I'll show you how to do that in this video here. And then what I've done is I've triple processed the raw file to produce this final result. So when I run this through on auto, this is what the image looks like. So it looks, looks really good. Doesn't look like there's any sort of problems whatsoever with the file. Now with cylindrical, it looks really good. But if you look down here on the post, if I go between both of them and I just click between them, you can see that this post here slightly has a little bit of removal of the post itself. So I'm not really going to probably go with cylindrical on this one. Now if you look at um, spherical, again it looks like it's done a good job. It's slightly off tilt but that doesn't really matter. So that looks like it's a pretty good option but again I think auto is for the win for this one so far. And this is perspective. So it's done this weird kind of bend and it's just, it's just not good at all. It's not what we're after. So auto definitely would be the one that I'd go for for this shot. Okay, now let's move on and we'll look at another one of a daytime scene. All right, so this is a really nice bright day shot in summer down at Newcastle on Bar Beach. So these are the files that made it up from right to left. So they look really nice. So when we run this through and select auto, again, we've got a really nice straight horizon. Doesn't look like there's any breaks or anything like that in it. This is cylindrical. So auto and cylindrical, what I've found are very, very close. It's almost like auto's default is to do a very sort of similar version of the cylindrical option. So this is um, spherical. So we've got this warped bowed horizon line. So this is going to be really difficult to try and fix. If you want to try and re-warp that, you're going to be looking at trying to use like puppet warp to try and warp it or some sort of perspective warp. Again, you wouldn't really waste your time, especially when you've got such good options like auto and cylindrical. Now this is perspective. So as you can see, it's, that's just absolute hot trash. Like when this process to giving you this example, it took about half hour to 40 minutes to do the stitch. It came out at 7.8 gig and it was about 80,000 pixels wide. So it was just it was just crazy. 
So for the next two examples, I'm not actually gonna show you perspective because when I ran it on the waterfall one, it actually crashed my computer and I could see that it was gonna pump out an image pretty much exactly like this. So it was just a total waste of time. Okay, now let's move on to the waterfall scene. Okay, so here we are, the waterfall scene looks really nice, really nice wide angle. And this is really like a shot that's really close up. Like this waterfall is shot at like 16 mil. So as it's come through, these are the shots from here, from left to right, coming around 50% overlap. So this is the actual shot run through with auto selected. So it looks really good. It's probably lifted and increased the height of the waterfall. This is cylindrical. So between auto and cylindrical, there's almost like nothing. And this is spherical. So see how spherical is coming, it's on an angle. Now that doesn't really matter at all. The main thing is, is that, is it distorted in some sort of way like we saw with the day shot where it's got that bowed horizon. So what I'll do with this one, I'll just duplicate my background layer, Command J, Command T to transform it, and then come through and then just warp it, or just change the perspective of it rotate it around to what looks good, then double click. And as you can see with this shot here, it is actually probably this one here. So they're very, very close. So I've with this shot, I've actually probably used spherical as the option. I haven't done auto. As if we look between the two now, you can see how the waterfall's actually increased in height. And with this one, it's actually squeezed it down a bit and actually just looks more what the shot actually was at the time. All right, our last example is going to be a shot on Soldier's Beach. Okay, so this is a really nice sunrise and the full edit of this image is part of my Master Digital Panoramic Photography course, if you're interested in checking that out. So when this one first starts, this is the files that we've got to make this shot up going from left to right. So again, 50% overlap going through. All our horizons are nice and straight. So this is a run on auto. So if we come in and look at our pull guideline down and have a look. So we've just got a slight little tilt running off to the right there, but that's probably just going to be a slight horizontal um, transform just to level it there. This is cylindrical. So again, when you look between auto and cylindrical, it's very, there's only like a, funny sort of slight change here in the rock. And then we come and look at spherical. We've got that bowed horizon again, which is exactly like we had with that day shot. So again, that's our final shot there. Auto, cylindrical, and spherical. All right guys, as you can see, auto and cylindrical are probably your best options. But at the end of the day, if one isn't quite working and giving you what you want, just have a crack at another layout. Don't waste your time with perspective, with landscapes. It doesn't really seem to do anything at all for them. If all these fail, maybe think of running your image through a third party application like Pitigui. Don't accept a bad stitch, especially if you've done everything right. And that's what I'll show you in this next video on how to overcome some of those problems.